Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Covenant Presbyterian Church. It's good to have you here with us today. We're looking forward to a wonderful time in worship, and it's a blessing to be here with you on this Mother's Day. So bow with me as we begin our time in prayer and ask God's blessings on our worship service, but above all on our moms, our grandmothers, uh, the ladies in our life, our wives and others who have had such an influence on us. So pray with me as we begin our time this morning. Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this day, for the occasion of your people joining in worship, we give you praise and thanksgiving, and we ask now that you suit a special blessing to each one with us today, in person and virtually, that you will touch us at our places of need and draw us heavenward, that we might worship you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that we might honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, being thankful for our salvation, for eternal life, for the indwelling presence of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, on this special day, let us honor our moms, our grandmothers, our wives. Lord, indeed, today we honor all the ladies that you've placed in our life who have helped bring us to where we are. Such a powerful gift from you. And we thank you for the gift of motherhood. Bless this time of worship. May it be pleasing to you. But above all, may it strengthen your people in our walks of faith. For your honor and glory we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, it is good to have you with us this morning. And uh, you don't hear any piano in the background. We're not going to be singing today as we're pretty small here. And uh, we're going to jump right into this. And I'm going to read our traditional Mother's Day passage of Scripture, which comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 31. That's one of those passages that I have read over and over throughout the years. And before I read it, as I did in Beaver Creek this morning, ladies, I want to tell you, there's two things about this passage that are very important. First of all, on a light note, I'm glad there's not a passage like this about men anywhere in the Scriptures. Uh, because I read this list and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is just a fabulous list of character traits. You might feel a little bit intimidated, and that brings us to our second part here. From what we can understand about the history of the book of Proverbs and the wisdom literature, this is not one person. What we see here is a collage of all the beauties that come with the feminine gender at various times and in various capacities in their life. I would dare say no one measures up to everything I'm about to read. There's not a man out there or a woman who measures up to all this. But we see principles in this that help us understand uh, what a beautiful gift it is called motherhood. And as I read this passage, I would ask you to listen to God's word. Let it speak to your hearts at this time. A wife of noble character who can find one. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and he lacks nothing. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from a distance. She gets up while it is still dark and she provides food for her family and provides also for the servants. She considers a field and purchases it. Out of the earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. She takes hold of the staff with her hand and she grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. And when it snows, she has no fear, for her household is clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linens and purples. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them as well and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days that are coming. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. 
her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. The word of the Lord. A powerful passage that we see here in the uh, book of um, Proverbs. We'll be looking at that in just a moment. Before we do, we want to go to our Lord in prayer again. After we pray, we will be joining together to say the Lord's Prayer. So you can follow along wherever you are. And uh, then we'll look into God's Word. So again, pray with me as we approach the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, again, your people humble themselves. We come before you with gladness in our heart, rejoicing that this is the day that you have made. We thank you for the day of worship that you've set aside to honor our Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, the triune God, three in one. What a blessing it is to call you by name and be called by you into your family. And on this day of worship, we also set aside a special recognition for our moms, all the ladies that you've brought into our lives in so many ways. We honor them today and thank you for the gift of motherhood, for the gift of the feminine gender. All of us are where we are because of the touch and the leadership of many people that you put in our lives. And many times, those people have been women. Father, for this blessing, we thank you. And we pray that today, moms across our land and around the world are honored. We pray that the name of Jesus Christ goes forth in boldness. We pray that you will bring a special measure of healing to all those who suffer today with physical infirmities, with mental weaknesses and areas of loss, and Lord, above all, spiritually, where we fall short, where we come again in humility, asking you to be our God, and for us, to be your people. And for that, we praise you and ask your guidance now into this time of preaching that you would bless the proclamation of your word. And before we do so, we ask that you let the voices of your people unite together and let us pray the way that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as we do look into God's Word this morning and we see the truth from uh, Proverbs, I want to begin with a quote that I shared in our newsletter this week, and it's uh, from my life coach, Craig Lonsborough. This is one of his favorite Mother's Day's quotes, and I believe it speaks fitly of this passage of Scripture and the examples I've seen in my own life. It says this, One of a mother's greatest gifts is to teach her child or children that to grow is not to timidly sit on some safe shore at water's edge and clumsily grab whatever happens to float by, but rather it is to deliberately step into the waters, both calm and turbulent, in order to wrestle great things to shore. And that lesson can best be taught by a mother who stands before her children dripping wet. As I read that quote uh, written by Craig, I think of a mom who teaches by example, and I see the power that that takes place in our lives. I was reminded this week um, that for many of us, today is a day of worship, a day of praise, a day of thankfulness, but there are also many people who struggle with a day like this because they may not have had the example I had or you had or others had growing up with a mom of that type of character. So for those of you who are struggling right now because of the day and the memories it might bring back, 
I want to ask you to join with us as we look into God's Word and see the issues of character that God desires for us to see on this day. Maybe we saw them in a man. Maybe we saw them in a woman. Maybe we have seen them in both, which would be a great blessing. But let's focus on the things that God blesses us with this day. And may it be a place of healing and peace if this is a time of trouble for you at this time. Who can find a woman of noble character? Who can find someone who is far more valuable than rubies? Who was taught by their moms not to sit by and let life happen, but to jump in the river, as Craig said, and grab the things of life and wrestle them to shore because we saw that from the example of our mom, our dad, or others in our life. Mother's Day is one of my favorite holidays of the year um, because I have been blessed in several unique ways that I always share on this special day. My mom, I wear this pink jacket today in honor of her. Uh, she was taken far too early at the age of 46. She died of cancer and I wear this to honor her. And um, because of her and her early sacrifices in the late 60s and early 70s, Many cancer treatments have been advanced to where they are today, where millions of lives have been saved. And my mom was one of the initial guinea pigs. That was her heart. She was a nurse, and she would have willingly traded her time to help others. And she did. And she taught me that, standing before me, dripping wet with compassion, showing that that's what life was about. After my mom... My father remarried, and I've heard all the stories of the horrible stepmom, and I have none of those. My stepmom was a fabulous woman, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Kathleen shortly. And then, as I moved out to Colorado in the early 80s, I met my wife, Sharissa, and her mother, Linda, my mother-in-law. I don't even have any horrible mother-in-law stories to tell. My mother-in-law's a great lady, as my wife is too, and I'm looking forward to our family dinner later today where we celebrate with the family around the table. But I am going to talk a little bit about the four special women in my life and how they fit into this passage. And they've all been that example for me and our family and for others on living a life that is filled with the fullness of God. I read this passage and I'm overwhelmed. This, this collage of people are always busy, they're always working, they're always caring for others, they're looking out for those who are less fortunate, they're wise, they're intelligent, they're compassion. All of these things come in here, and we see charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman that fears the Lord is to be praised. And it begins with that fear of the Lord, with that relationship with our Lord and Savior Himself. That becomes the basis for motherhood. It becomes the basis for life for each one of us. And we'll start with my mom. As I said, she was taken far too early in life. She was 46. And uh, I was a senior in high school, and several things had been going on. But one day in our psychology class, Mr. Tomlinson asked, who would tell us what their life story is, how your week goes? And nobody raised their hands. And I decided I just wanted to get it over with. So I came up to the front of the class and sat in the chair and asked the question, what does your normal week look like? And I said, well, on Monday through Friday, I go to school. I get up and I fix breakfast for me and everybody else in the house. And I drive to school and I pick up, take my brother to elementary school and pick up some other friends and bring them to school with me. And then we go home. And a couple of days each week after school, I'll take my mom down to a clinic in the Atlanta area. It's about an hour, hour and 20 minutes away so that she could receive her treatments and then come back. And on Saturday, I would work at a grocery store. In the summer, I worked more times, but during school, my parents thought it would be best if I only worked on Saturday, so I did. And after I'd get off work, I'd buy groceries for the week and bring that home, and then we'd usually have after church on Sunday a good lunch and all of that. And one of my classmates sitting in the room said, Tim, I want to ask you a question. And I said, okay. He says, do you do most of the cooking for your family? And I said, well, probably about half of it. Um, I, I've always enjoyed cooking. When I was 10, my father gave me the rite of passage and we were outside cooking the family steak. And he uh, said, Tim, you need to learn this. And he showed me a little trick with his hand. And if you push your thumb and forefinger together and then feel the muscle on your thumb, that's medium rare. 
If you use your middle finger, it's medium. If you move your ring finger, it's medium well. If you use your little finger, as Dad would say, you cooked it too long, it's burnt, throw it away and start again. Because we always were the medium rare family. So been cooking for a while and I said, yeah, I do that. And then they go, and you buy the groceries. I said, sometimes I do, but not all the time. And you take your mom and one of the kids said, looking at me goes, you don't have a normal life, do you? I said, well, it's normal to me. That's all I've ever known. You know, we've all grown up with normal. What we experienced, that's all we knew. That was what I grew up with. And yes, my la in my teenage years, most of the time my mom was struggling with illness, but the character was still there. And one of the things that God was working in my heart my senior year of high school is I knew he was calling me to be a minister. I tried to make some great deals with God at that time about things that I would be willing to do other than be a pastor. Uh, I, would, I, was, I, I, made, I would go to church every day if I had to. And uh, in the spring of 1975, uh, right, the week after Mother's Day, actually, we were in a thing called Spring Revival at our home church growing up, and we had a guest evangelist. We had services each night, and I did something on that Tuesday before we went to church that night that I never recommend people to do. I was in my room by myself, and I argued with God, and I told him things that I didn't want to tell him, but basically it came down to this. I said, God, you're going to make things so evidently clear tonight that not even I can miss it. Or you're going to leave me alone. I'm tired of wrestling with this. So we went to church that night. Of course, I sat as far back as I possibly could. And the guest evangelist had a Bible about the size of mine right now. I don't know if it was large print like mine is, but it's about this size. And um, he opened up the Bible and he started reading out of the Gospel of John. And I thought, this is great. I'm off the hook. Two minutes into that sermon, he stopped. And our pastor was sitting right in the front row, and his name was James Howard Galloway. And he looked at him and said, Pastor James, i got to tell you, this is wrong. I'm not supposed to preach this sermon tonight, even though we've planned it. He said, I want you to pray for me right now, and I'll see what the Lord leads. So... We all prayed, Pastor Galloway prayed. He turned in his Bible to the book of Daniel and read a passage out of the book of Daniel. And again, I'm thinking, this is good. I'm liking that one. Another two minutes, he stopped again. He said, this, this is not right either. A third time that happened. And he stopped again. He goes, I'm apolo he apologized to everybody. He said, I'm sorry. I've never had this happen to me in my life. I've prayed for months getting ready for this week. These are the messages God laid on my heart. We've talked about them weeks in advance. And he shut his Bible and said, for some reason, I'm supposed to talk about my call into the ministry. Will you imagine what went through my head? Don't ever make a deal with God you're not willing to follow through with because he made it that clear. That night after the service, I came up and told our pastor and others that God was calling me to be a minister. It was a very frightening time. And right after the service, my pastor said, Tim, let's go home and tell your mom. She wasn't able to come to services with us that night because of her illness. And I said, that's a great idea. So I drove to the house and I knocked on the door. Well, I didn't knock on the door, I just opened the door. And I look over, and my mom's about as far away from me as you are right now. And I said, Mom, I've got something to tell you. And she was knitting, and she never missed a knot. She didn't look up. She just said, no, you don't. I've known this since the day you were born. I've just been waiting on God to tell you. She stood before me dripping wet as a woman of prayer, having prayed for me for 18 years that I never knew about. Five months later, she passed and went to be with the Lord. In December, we had the worst Christmas ever because it was just me, my dad, my little brother, 
my sister had been married. She was living in the Denver area at that time. And uh, we were there and it was just awful. And as we got into the next year, I remember the day dad was taking me somewhere and he said, Tim, I wanna ask you a question. See if you get upset about this. And he said, I've been thinking about asking someone to go have dinner with me. And she's a lady. And uh, that kind of took my breath away at first, first time I heard it. And then he told me who, what her name was and said, you know, she's a friend of the family. We've known her for years and um, just wanted to let you know, see how you feel about that. That was very odd for my dad. He didn't ever talk that way, really. And where these words came from, I, never, I will never know other than God himself because I looked at my father and I said, Dad, you deserve to go out with a lady and have a good time. But do not ask somebody out because I know them or Pete knows them or my sister Lane knows them. If you want to take someone out, you take them out because you want to. He never asked out the friend of the family. He asked out a lady named Kathleen Turner. As it would happen, she also was a nurse who had worked with my mom in the clinic for years. They had a whirlwind courtship. They were married four months later. And at the wedding, a friend of the family came up to us, came up to me afterwards, and I think uh, my brother heard, I think Dad even heard this. Her name was Joe Bailey. And Joe said to me, Tim, last summer, in your mom's last summer, I was sitting with her one morning, and she told me, that there's a lady she works with named Kathleen who deserves a good husband like Tillman, my dad. Those words had never been mentioned until the day they were married. Kathleen became my stepmom. And she showed me what character really is because in the last summer my mom was living, my sister was pregnant with her first granddaughter, we found out be a daughter and uh, my mom in every moment where she was physically able to we would take trips down to a department store and she would buy little girl clothes for the new granddaughter and she racked up a huge credit card bill got beautiful clothes for our little niece and uh, when she, after she was born my mother did see her before she passed away and um, after Daddy and Kathleen got married, the bills continued to roll in, and Kathleen said, if I had been there, I would have done the same thing. Please let me pay these bills in honor of Lou. Dripping wet with compassion, with love, I moved out to Colorado, came to seminary. That's where I met my wife, my mother-in-law, Linda. I don't have any horrible stories to tell about a mother-in-law either. Great family. Looking forward to spending time with them today. Met my wife, Sharisa, in church, the mother of our two children. And I look at those four ladies and I see these characteristics in all of them. Hardworking, integritous, caring, compassionate, wise, and all with a relationship with the Lord. It all came to fulfillment right there. And as I see this, I'm like, she is worthy to be praised. And I think of Craig's quote again, one of mother's greatest gifts is to teach their children not to sit on the side of the shore and wait on life to float by, but to jump right into the middle of the calm waters and the turbulent and wrestle great things into the shore. Christ said he came that we might have life and might have it abundantly. And for us to have that abundant life, we've got to be willing to go into it as the Lord directs. So that's one of those gifts of motherhood. And I'm pretty pleased to uh, stand before you on Mother's Day and say thank you to my mom, my stepmom, my mother-in-law, my wife, and many other ladies that God has used in my life to bring me to where I am today. None of us are where we are right now by accident. We got here growth, maturity, someone caring for us. I can name some men who were influential in my life, but you know what? 
Those four ladies take the cake. Next to the Lord himself, those are the highlights and those are the most influential people in my life. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Today my encouragement for each of you is to give honor to your moms, your grandmothers, the ladies in your life. Just before the service, I was sitting in the office this morning and I got to do a little bit of texting on Mother's Day and I texted my sister-in-law, uh, I texted my mother-in-law, um, I texted my daughters-in-law to tell them Happy Mother's Day. And um, 15 months ago on Sunday, February the 6th, last year, Sharice and I, we had our first grandchild. It was in the middle of a service. And I remember when that day rang, it, it, I remember it well. The phone was buzzing in my back pocket in the middle of a sermon. And as I told everybody at Beaver Creek this morning, it was at the Beaver Creek service. I was preaching a good sermon that morning. But it got real short real quick when I knew that little Avery was born. And I see that gift of life continuing. And I entitled the message today, The Hope of Mother's Day. And I do that because we've been talking about hope this month, but we can have hope, first of all, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have that hope there. But we also have hope because he's given moms, grandmothers, wives, other ladies who influence us that they bring hope for the future. My life is better because of the influence they've had on me, and it encourages me to want to do the same for this next generation to help our sons, our daughters-in-law, be the people God wants them to be, to help each of us become the people God wants us to be. So today on Mother's Day, give her the reward she's earned. Let her know how special she is. And take that as a personal challenge as well, to also become more like that person. To strengthen those who are in your world, in your life, helping them to become the people God desires for them to be, and then we see the fullness of the body of Christ coming together and working as God has directed us. That's God's word for us today. I pray that it's been a word of encouragement for you. Next week we're going to continue in our Hope series. And if you're in town, we'd love to see you here on that time. And if not, we'll see you when you get back this summer. But thank you for worshiping with us this morning. And now let's pray together and thank, the God, thank our God for the beauty of this day. Again, Lord, we do thank you for the joy and the beauty of Mother's Day. For this time where we honor you for the gift of life, for our salvation, for our eternity. And how in your wisdom you placed people in our lives, maybe our moms, our grandmothers, our wives, our mother-in-laws. Maybe another lady, maybe even a man. Lord, you've put us here together and you've called us to work together and be the body of Christ. And I pray that this day we would walk in the blessings that you've given to us and called us to. That our lives might be a blessing unto you. We thank you for this time and ask you to guide us now in the days and weeks ahead that we might live according to your purpose for your honor and glory. And I pray this blessing upon each one in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God's blessings upon you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. We look forward to seeing you when you're in town. Go in the peace of Christ. Enjoy today. And don't forget, give her the reward that she's earned in Jesus' name. Thank you for worshiping with us. It's been great to be with you.